Hello everyone, welcome to Scalp Acupuncture, presented by Lamp Acu Wellness Foundation, Inc. Introduction and Head Anatomy Scalp Acupuncture Therapy treats and prevents disease by needling specific stimulation areas on the scalp. It is a new therapy based on the theory of traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture techniques, clinical experience, holographic theory, and a modern knowledge of the representative areas of the cerebral cortex. This therapy is often used clinically to treat central nervous system disorders, such as sequelae of cerebral disease, while development of the nervous system, and sequelae of brain damage, especially for paralysis due to stroke, as well as internal medicine, gynecology, and pediatrics. Scalp acupuncture is able to treat more than 100 different diseases. The scalp is the area where the Zangfu, meridians, chi, and blood connect. Thus, it has a close relationship with the human body's physiologic functions and pathologic changes. Scalp acupuncture is based on traditional Chinese medicine theory and is based on the following theories. Mu point theory, theory of meridian systems, theory of the cerebral cortex, and holographic theory. The Mu Point Theory Mu points are Zangfu and meridian energies collecting at the chest and abdomen. There are 12 Mu points at the chest and abdomen that represent 12 Zangfu organs. Most Mu points do not lie on their own meridians. For example, the stomach Mu point is Ren 12, which is located on the Ren meridian. However, Ren 12 or Civ 12 is a very effective point for stomach disorders because it is located over the stomach area. Similarly, when the patient has paralysis of the extremities due to brain damage, the use of scalp acupuncture to stimulate the scalp over the arm and leg motor control areas of the brain can be very effective to treat paralysis. This treatment is based on the Mu point theory. Theory of Meridian Systems The scalp and head have a close relationship with the meridians. All of the 12 meridians, essential chi and blood, rise to the head. The meridians directly or indirectly connect with the scalp and brain. The head also connects to the Zangfu through the meridians. All of the meridians, Zangfu organs, chi, and blood disorders are reflected on the head. Thus, we can diagnose and treat disease using the scalp. Scalp acupuncture is effective because the intersection of many meridians and the location of many points are on the scalp. Therefore, it has a close relationship with the brain, zangfu, chi, and blood. Theory of Cerebral Cortex Some scalp acupuncture systems are based on modern knowledge of the representative areas and functions of the cerebral cortex. It is believed that there is a close relationship between the functions of the cerebral cortex and the scalp therapeutic zones. By stimulating the scalp, we are able to adjust the functions at the corresponding areas of the cerebral cortex to treat disease. The holographic theory. Like other microacupuncture systems, scalp acupuncture is based on the holographic theory. Scalp acupuncture systems are based on the belief that the human body is a complete unit. On the scalp, a representative image of the human body is created. By stimulating the scalp on areas of this holographic representation, we are able to treat diseases that correspond to the Zangfu organs. In conclusion, stimulating the scalp in specific areas will not only open the meridians, it will also harmonize yin and yang and regulate the functions of the Zangfu organs to treat disease. Clinical research shows that scalp acupuncture stimulation is able to adjust cerebral functions and increase blood flow to the brain. Scalp acupuncture functions to help dilation and constriction of blood vessels, improve blood vessel elasticity, increase heart muscle contractility, 
and decrease blood viscosity and improve motor and sensory functions of the four extremities. Let's talk about head anatomy, structure of the skull. The skull consists of 29 bones and contains five large cavities. The term cranium implies the parts of the skull that enclose the brain. The remainder of the skull is the facial skeleton. Scalp acupuncture is mostly performed on the exterior surface of the skull, which is above the roof of the cranial cavity. The bones of the skull include frontal bone, parietal bones, occipital bone, temporal bones, and the sphenoid bone. The frontal bone is anterior to the calvaria. It is unpaired. The parietal bones are posterior to the frontal bone, paired. Occipital bone is posterior to the parietal bones, unpaired. Temporal bones are on the sides of the skull, paired. The sphenoid bone is anterior to the temporal bones and base of the occipital bone, traversing from the left to right sides of the skull, unpaired. The sutures of the skull include coronal suture, sagittal suture, lambdoid suture, squamosal suture. The coronal suture is the suture between the frontal bone and the two parietal bones. The sagittal suture, suture between the two parietal bones. Lambdoid suture, suture between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone. Squamosal suture, the suture between the temporal and parietal bones. The junction areas of the skull include bregma, lambda, terion. Bregma, junction of the coronal and sagittal sutures. Lambda, junction of the sagittal and lambdoid sutures. Terion, junction of the frontal, parietal, sphenoid, and temporal bones. Head anatomy, skeletal surface landmarks. The pericranio-cervical line demarcates the head from the neck. It runs from the midpoint of the chin to the external occipital protuberance. Frontal tuberosity is located 3 cm above the midpoint of each supraorbital margin. Parietal tuberosity, superior posterior part of the parietal bone where there is a prominence. Superciliary arch, a ridge located below the frontal tuberosity above the supraorbital margin. Glabella, between the two superciliary arches. It is the area used to measure the size of the skull. Zygomatic arch, located at the lateral side of the face anterior to the external auditory meatus. The zygomatic arch is the meeting area of the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Terion is located 3.8 cm above the midpoint of the zygomatic arch where the frontal, parietal, sphenoid, and temporal bones all come together. The anterior branch of the superficial temporal artery 
is located in this area. It is the most fragile area of the skull. Mastoid process of the temporal bone. A round process located posterior and inferior to the ear. External occipital protuberance, the midline ridge on the posterior and inferior part of the occipital bone. Bregma, a connecting area between the frontal bone and the parietal bones. It is an intersection point of the coronal suture and the sagittal suture. It is the site of the anterior fontanel. Lambda, located at the junction of the sagittal and lambdoid sutures. It is the site of the posterior fontanel, 6 cm above the external occipital protuberance. Thank you very much for your attention and see you on our next video.